And let's look at the convolution of these two exponential functions. So they're zero in these regions and they're exponential in the region shown. So this is e to the t in that region, zero out here and zero out here. And this is also e to the t in this region and zero here and zero here. Okay, so for convolution, uh, we look the fun the first function, we, we need to plot them as a function of tor. So I'm gonna redraw this as a function of tor simply by changing the t to tor. So this is our first function. And then I like to draw the other function, the functions that we're multiplying together in the convolution equation. And so let's draw z of t minus tor because we're going to multiply those two together in the convolution equation. And for a video on the convolution equation, see my uh, web page where you'll find uh, an explanation of the convolution equation and why this is the case. I'm going to pick this value of t here. We've got to do it for all values of t, but let me pick this one to start with. So what is this function? Let's draw this function. Well, when the thing in the brackets equals zero, we're going to have this part of the function over here. So when t minus tor equals zero, so the value we're plotting with respect to tor, so when tor equals t, we have zero in the brackets. We look up here and we find out zero in the brackets is that part of the graph. So that part of the graph is there. What about this interesting part? Well, this is when the part thing in the brackets equals two. So over here, we've got uh, t minus tor. So when t minus tor equals two, what value of tor is that? Because we're plotting here with respect to tor. So that value of tor is tor equals t minus two. Where is t minus two? Well, this is t, I've drawn it for this value of t. So t minus two is two back to the left from here. And this is where that part of the graph went to. Okay, so this is z of t minus tor plotted as a function of tor. We need to multiply these two together in the convolution equation because that is the convolution equation. Yt equals x of tor times z of t minus tor d tor. And we integrate that from negative infinity to infinity. This is the convolution equation. Okay, so let's do it for here. If we multiply these two together for the value of t that I've shown, uh, there's going to be no overlap. There's zero here multiplying by this part of the function, so the answer is zero. So straight away, we can say that for values of t, t so this value of t that I've drawn, for all values of t, clearly, for all values of t that are less than zero, the answer will be zero, y of t equals zero. Okay, there's no overlap. The zero here multiplies this part of the function. This zero multiplies that. So when you multiply them together in the convolution equation, as we multiply them together here, you'll get an answer of zero. Okay, so what about for t bigger than zero? And we see this one. This will be when, I've, when t is over here. So in, instead of on the left here, it'll be a little bit on the right. Then you can multiply those together and you'll see that the overlap will be between zero because this is still multiplying everything to the left of zero multiplied by zero. So this will now be from zero up to whatever value of t. I'm just going to redraw this, shift it along to a value of t here. So if this was the value of t, a new value of t, then this function would look like this. And for more examples, you can see uh, convolution explained in more detail in other videos as to why I'm drawing it and why I'm shifting it. But this, for these values of t, for t up to 1, so for t equals 0 to t equals 1, then the overlap is going to be this region here. And because this part of the graph here will be multiplied by that negative, by that 0. And this part of the graph here will be multiplied by that 0. So y t for this range will equal the integral from zero up to t of, what's xt equals e, or x of tor equals e to the tor. And what is this function here? This is z of t minus tor. So it's, it's e to the t up here, but where we're replacing t by t minus tor. 
So this is e to the t minus tor. We've got to integrate that d tor. Okay, so this is integrated by d tor. So with these is both exponentials. So this equals the integral from zero to t of this tor minus that tor. You're just left with e to the t d tor. e to the t is a constant with respect to tor. So this comes out of the front e to the t, and then you've got an integral from zero to t d tor. Uh, and this because this is just a one in here, so this is equal to uh, uh, when you take the integral, you'll have e to the t outside of tor evaluated between zero and t, uh, which equals e to the t times t, because this will be t minus zero. The, the t goes in there minus the zero, which equals t e to the t. Okay, so this is the equation for the range from zero to one. Okay, so when t gets bigger than one, we can see that this function here, I can redraw it out here, will be, and this is here t minus two. So this function will look like this now uh, for these values of t. And so now this will fully overlap with this one. And so the integral, so between 1, t, and 2, y, t will equal the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, so from 0 to 1, because it's still bigger than 1, will still be multiplied by 0. So now it's from 0 to 1 of this. And we can see here, it exactly follows the same calculations as over here. And so the e to the t comes out the front. So we've got, uh, well, let me draw this. This is e to the t d tor. So the e to the t comes out the front. And now we've got e to the t with this function here. Exactly the same calculations follow through. Instead of having a t up here, we have a 1. And so this is 1. And so this will be 1 times this. So this is e to the t. Okay, hopefully you can follow through those, those calculations. Don't get confused by the t being here and here. e to the t is still a constant with respect to tor, so it comes out the front. Here we've got 0 to 1. e to the t is a constant with respect to tor, still comes out the front. And instead of being from 0 to t, it's now from 0 to 1. And then once we start getting the, uh, the this left-hand edge of this function moving. So for bigger values of t, for t even bigger, this is going to come in and then there'll be a zero here. So for t bigger than two, and this will be all the way up to uh, when t minus two equals one. So when t minus two equals one, I'll just make a little note over here, t minus two equals one. This means t equals three. So between t equals two and three, then yt will be between, we'll see that this will be the values of t in this range here, where the limit is now from t minus two up to one, uh, e to the t. And so we've got the same uh, happening again, except now we've got the e to the t comes out the front, and now we've got the limit being from t minus 2 up to 1 of detour. Okay, and so this one here equals this uh, limit here with 1 minus t minus 2. Uh, so this equals e to the t outside of 1 minus t plus 2, uh, which equals, um, here we can see, uh, 3 minus t times e to the t. Okay, and then for t bigger than 3, this edge will be over here. There'll be no overlap again, and the answer will be 0. So one of the main things that confuses people with these exponentials of exponentials is the fact that e to the power t is a constant with respect to tor and can be taken out the front of the integral, even though the limits still involve t. And so this, sometimes this is confusing,
but make sure you're understanding that this is just a number. It's a constant number, e to the power t, constant with respect to tor, which is what's doing the integral. So don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage for a complete list of all the videos that are on the channel.